Hi guys, welcome back to the workshop. A lot of people have asked me how much it cost to build my workshop. So in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining how I built it, the materials I used to build it with, and how much it will cost. So if you don't like listening to people talk, then this probably isn't gonna be the video for you. But if you're interested to find out how I went about building my workshop and how much it costs to build it, then stick around because that's coming up next. Right, so first I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what I purchased and how much it will cost. And then I'll throw some pictures in and explain more in detail about how I went about building it. So the first thing I purchased was nine sheets of 18 mil thick OSB. That was gonna be used for the floor and the roof and I bought 25 four inch concrete blocks and that came to a total of 296 pounds 71p. Right, so for the main structure of the building, I had some choices such as three by two timber, four by two timber. Um, I had C16 grade, C24 grade, treated or untreated. Now, I decided to use treated timber in the end, although it's not going to be open to the elements as such, because it's an outdoor wooden workshop, I decided uh, I'd pay the little bit extra and go for the treated timbers. And that's everything, i.e. the floor, walls, roof, it's all treated. I went for four by twos, mainly because I wanted enough room within the walls to add a decent amount of insulation. And also I thought that'd be a bit stronger than three by twos. And I went for the C24 grade over the C16 grade because the C24 will carry heavier loads and cross bigger spans without support so to be honest the difference in price wasn't that great so i thought i may as well go for the 4x2 treated c24 grade over anything else so hopefully the shed will last quite a while i purchased 58 4x2s at 2.4 meters i purchased 12 four by twos at three meters treated. I purchased eight four by twos at 4.8 meters. And for the exterior cladding on the workshop, I went for the cheapest option they had, and that was for rebated feather edge cladding. Um, the thickness was 32 millimetres by 175 millimetres and obviously that's rebated and each piece overlaps the piece below it so there's no way any water can get through and that was the cheapest obviously if I had loads of money I would have loved to have gone with like cedar cladding but obviously that would have cost me an arm and a leg so I went for the cheapest option which was the rebated feather edge cladding and I purchased 51 of those and all of that came to grand total of £998.73 pence. so quite expensive but for the amount I actually purchased I didn't think that was too bad at all so the insulation I chose in the floor and the, the roof I went for 75 mil thick polystyrene boards and that came to 145 pound 34p and the insulation in the walls I bought two rolls and that come to 80 pound. Right, as far as the electrics go I bought grommets, metal sockets, metal switches, plastic conduit few spurs, um, conduit saddles, cable cleats, junction boxes, armoured cable, twin and earth normal cable 
Um, different connectors, sleeve in, light fittings. All the electric came to £126.6p. I bought a big roll of damp proof cores, which I laid underneath the entire base and it was like wrapped around the actual subframe so that should stop any moisture from affecting the subfloor. I purchased a big roll of breathable membrane like Tyvek but mine was a much cheaper brand and I bought more than enough to do probably about three of my workshops and that came to 25 quid so that weren't too bad. So for the roof there are various options available. You could go for felt, you could go for the corrugated roofing sheets, you could go for rubber or fiberglass. I went for the fiberglass option mainly because it's maintenance free, last should last for years to come. Um, and for the roof trims, the fiberglass matting, the fiberglass um, resin and the flow coat that you put on the top that waterproofs it, all of that came to £266.22p. Once again, it is expensive, more expensive than felt would have been, but I was kind of thinking long longevity when I built it. So Now the window that I have in my building. I only went for a small window, mainly because I didn't want to lose too much wall space. And I've got a window on the door and I thought one small window would be enough. And the window itself with delivery cost me 72 pound and it'll open like a normal window does or it tilts. So you've got two options how you want to open it. The door I bought second hand and it was marked online at 20 quid and when I spoke to the guy that was selling it he offered to deliver it for me as well um, as long as I gave him the 20 quid. Now I did actually pay 30 because he went out of his way to deliver it so the second hand double glazed door cost 30 quid. So to board the inside of the shed up, the walls and the ceiling, I chose 12mm OSB because at the time I'd thought about using plywood but it was really expensive. I'd thought about using um, MDF but that's also quite heavy and awkward to fit on your own. And in the end I went for the cheapest option at the time which was 8 um 12mm OSB and that came to £262.08 and that was for 16 sheets. That basically done all the internal walls and the ceiling. To attach the roof rafters to the wall plates I bought a big pack of truss clips and I used those to tie down the rafters to the top plates um, with the galvanised twist nails so there ain't no way the roof's going to blow off and as far as screws and miscellaneous stuff like screws, nails, um, paints etc I've actually added £150 for all of that now I'm sure that's completely over the top for what I actually spent on screws and things um, but I thought I'd put it down as 150 um, that way I know it's covered so the entire thing cost £2,487.54p so for a 16 by 8 workshop I'm quite happy with that and if you was to go out and buy one that size it'd probably cost you double that and it wouldn't be as nice as this one is so so for the base i was going to use five rows of five blocks but then i decided that five rows of three blocks would be sufficient 
and once they were all level with one another widthways and lengthways I could remove enough soil so that the blocks were above the level of soil leaving a sufficient air gap so for the floor I decided to go with 16 inch on center that way the base would be plenty strong enough and it was all put together using screws then the 75 millimeter insulation was pushed tightly between the cross members and the damp proof membrane was laid underneath the entire floor and wrapped around the sides of the floor so because the back wall is fairly close to the perimeter fence I decided it would be a lot easier to build the wall, put the breathable membrane on it and then clad the wall before standing it up. So for the walls I decided to go with 24 inch on centre instead of the 16 inch on centre that I'd done for the floor. That way I could save a little bit of money and wouldn't need quite as many uprights. And because I already had the window and the door, I was able to build the walls to suit. I'm not sure how well it shows in the photos, but the end walls are raked walls, meaning they're cut at an angle to allow for the slope on the roof from front to back. and all the walls are joined together with nails and plenty of screws so with the walls built I could wrap the building in a breathable membrane and then start fixing the cladding on now what I should have done is put some horizontal and vertical battens on and then fixed the cladding over the top of that to allow a proper sufficient air gap but I wanted to save a little bit of money and time so I just put the cladding directly over the membrane and doesn't seem to have caused any problems doing it that way To trim the door, I simply cut down a leftover deck board that I had and used that to trim the door. And here you can see how it looks with all the cladding in place. Here's a view of the inside with the breathable membrane around and the insulation between the rafters then it was time to start the roof and the first job to do was attach all the outer trims and the drip edge along the back with a load of clout nails then I could roll out the fiberglass matting add the resin and then when that was dry rub it down and then add the waterproof flow coat over the top and you can see at first it was quite shiny but after a couple of months that's actually died down to a more matte finish then to finish it off and to cover up the ends of the cladding I decided to join up some old deck boards that I had lying about and I fix them over the corners and I think it finishes off the workshop nicely so I decided on a cold roof which meant I needed plenty of ventilation between the rafters to avoid any sort of moisture build up or condensation so after putting some 75mm insulation 
in the roof space above the walls that would leave a 25 mil gap above for a ventilation so I covered the soffits with some exterior grade ply and added eight air vents along the front edge and eight along the back and that would allow sufficient ventilation so now it was time to paint the shed and I decided on white and to match the grey roof I decided to paint the corners the door trim and the window surround grey and I'm glad I did because the colours look sick So with the outside done and waterproof I could dig the trench and start running the cables for the electrics from the house to the workshop and it was run through the uprights to each and every socket and it was run on the surface to the light fixtures. Then I could insulate the walls and start lining the internal walls and ceiling with 12mm OSB. Then I could give it a quick coat of paint and this is how it looks two years down the line. To sum it up quickly, the whole complete build up until the point we're at now in the workshop cost me £2,487.54. There's a couple of things I still want to add to the workshop. The first one being the floor. I want to lay a proper floor over the OSB, either the rubber flooring that you can get, or lino, something durable, easy to lay, and like not too costly. The other thing I want to do is get rid of the two standard light fittings I've got and add three LED strip lights. So if I was to start this build again, is there anything I would do different, differently? differently I'm happy with the materials I'm happy with the prices um, one thing I think I would do different is the roof rather than a fiberglass roof I think I would have chosen a rubber roof mainly because that would have been a hell of a lot easier to do price wise it was no different to what it cost me to do the fiberglass roof and I think they will both last the same sort of time but if I could start again, yeah, I would definitely go for the rubber roof because it would have been a hell of a lot easier to um, for me to do. Other than that, there's nothing else I'd change. Obviously, I'd like a, a bigger workshop, but I had to compromise with the wife. And you know what they say, happy wife, happy life. So I'm happy with what I've got for the money I've paid. And... Yeah, that's that. So if there's anything I've missed out or anything that you want to know that I haven't covered, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to reply. I want to thank all my regular subscribers for supporting the channel and watching the videos. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And if you're watching a video on this channel for the first time, um, I would really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button, tapping the little bell icon and becoming part of my journey. So without further ado, that's going to wrap it up from me. In the meantime, until the next video, stay safe, look after yourselves and you will see me in the next video. Cheers for watching guys.